Hi, this is Derek Elin, and in this video, I am going to be talking about how to compile your still images in Adobe Premiere uh, into a stop motion animation, as well as add sound if that's something you're inclined to do. Um, it's most likely that both of these things are just kind of extra. They're not usually necessarily things I have students do, uh, but if you're just interested or doing it on your own, uh, here's how you go about it. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and I've already opened Adobe Premiere. Um, I just went Start Menu, Adobe Master Collection, CS whatever, uh, and then started Premiere. I'm going to go ahead and do New Project. Um, none of this stuff should matter for you. In other words, um, you're just going to leave whatever defaults are there. Um, what does matter is location, and I'm just going to say hit Browse and pick Desktop. Normally, I don't recommend that you're working on the desktop, excuse me, or locally to the computer that you're on. Uh, in this case, I would, just to kind of keep things, you know, snappy. Um, that way you're not working from a networked drive. Um, and uh, I've got my location, and then I'll just change my name to Stop Motion. And I'll hit OK. Uh, this box comes up, and there's a lot here. These are all, like, just different video modes. Um, generally, especially if you're filming from a single source, you want to use uh, whatever that source is, you know, whatever it films in. Um, so if I was, you know, doing iPhone, I would probably pick 1080p30, um, which is... Um, High definition, 30 frames per second. What we're going to do is we're going to pick DVNTSC. Um, I would have had you or I would have set uh, your cameras uh, to be standard definition. Um, we're using you know somewhat older cameras that can actually go that low uh, with the resolution. And again, that just kind of keeps things quick and simple. Um, so I'm going to pick standard 48 kilohertz. Um, standard meaning it's not widescreen, just like the LCD screen on your camera. Um, sequence one, I'm going to leave that alone and let this, that just be called sequence one and I'm going to hit okay. All right. And, um, here I've got Adobe Premiere. Um, in a nutshell, uh, you know, basically I've got like my effects tab here. I use that a lot. Um, up here I've got effects controls. You're not really going to do much of anything with either of those. Uh, the big important boxes for you are this box down here, which is your timeline. This box over here, which is your monitor, in other words, that lets you see what you're doing, and this box over here, which is your asset menu. Um, so anything you're adding in uh, is going to pop up here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go File Import. Um, I'm assuming you've already like gotten the images off your camera. You would not want to be uh, pulling images into Premiere directly from a memory card. You want to get them off the camera and onto Again, I would just work from the desktop for the sake of this. It's something that can be done within the span of a period. Um, I'm going to hit import, go to the desktop, and I'm already on the desktop. Uh, I'm going to scroll around until I find the folder that I put these in. I would put them in a folder before you move them over because you probably have a couple hundred. Um, I think mine only has a, about a hundred. But um, So here it is, and I'm going to hit open. And then I'm just going to sort by, or I'm sorry, I'm going to do view list. Uh, now I'll do view details. Yeah, that way it's all in a row. And I'm just going to start at the top and drag a big box around every single photograph I have. And then I'm going to hit open. And they're all going to pop up right here. And they should all pop up in order. Uh, because of the way I selected them. Um, what I'm going to do at this point, since they're all automatically selected, is I'm just going to kind of grab from this icon, the very top one, and I'm going to drag. It doesn't look like anything's moving until I get to the timeline, and then I can just drag everything into the video one layer on the timeline. All right, um, now my monitor is a bit small. I am just going to kind of move the center of this around a little bit. I don't really need to see much of the timeline, so I'll kind of maximize the... Um, the source monitor right here. Um, all right, and if I take this little blue guitar pick, I know it's small, it's, it's you know gonna be right here. If I take this and kind of move it across it, there's a red line that's moving across it, and you can kind of see my little animation uh, that I made. Mine is, again, very short. Um, so now that everything is in, I might double check to make sure it's all in order, and it seems to animate. Um, in my story, I've got this like generic title card, 
um, and that runs for several frames. Uh, and then I have this like surfer dude and the monster and its baby, uh, and he brings them some ice cream for the baby and a fishy treat for the mother, father, whatever it is. And then he devours the baby and waves goodbye as the parent gets really sad. Um, so, um, what I want to do first before anything else, before I worry about, um, any dialogue I might want, which again is optional, uh, or about how fast it's animating. You know, I don't want it to go that fast. Uh, well, the first thing I might do is just kind of double check to make sure it looks the way it should. Um, if for instance, in, um, you know, let's say this shot right here, if all I'm seeing is the baby and I know there was more than that, uh, that means I filmed with the wrong camera settings. That's not the end of the world, but it's a little tedious. You're going to have to batch process, process them in Photoshop uh, using actions. I'm not going to show that here. Um, it's, it's typically a very rare uh, mistake and is usually my fault anyway, so I'll be happy to um, help you with that if that problem comes up. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to render the video. Uh, now, I will say, I'll just kind of play it from here. If I hit the play button, it's playing right now. You can see the red line moving slowly. Uh, you will notice that it's animating very, very, very slowly. See that? It's basically one frame every five seconds. Um, most of the time when you watch video, it's either 24 or 30 frames per second, not one frame every 30 seconds. That'd be very, very boring and slow. Um, so, um, in order to fix that, I'm not going to edit the timeline at all. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to render the video as it is. So I'm going to go file export media. Um, my window popped up on my second screen, so I'll kind of pull it over. It should pop up right here. Um, and then I'm actually not really going to change anything. Um, I, it's going to default to Microsoft AVI. And especially since we're working with standard definition, um, we're not too worried about that. If you were working in high definition or you were picky about what you're going to do with your file, then you might, you know, mess with your settings like a lot. There's a lot you can do. Um, if I scroll down in this video tab, um, there is this one little checkbox that I might check that says render at maximum depth. Um, so I'm going to do that. And the other thing that I'm going to mess with is where it says output name. You're not just naming it, you're telling it where to go. So if I click that and I'm on the desktop and that's fine, as long as I know where I'm putting it, it's a good idea again to render to the desktop because everything is nice and local, uh, not rendering to one of our many networked drives. Um, so I'll just call it um, animation one. And I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to hit export. And then this progress bar comes up and it's going relatively fast actually. Um, so uh, it is rendering like essentially like an eight minute animation. And again, it's like the slowest animation ever. Um, but I want to render it first. And when I render it, I want to essentially take that rendered video and squish it. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point, and I'll make it a little easier to see the timeline. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm actually going to just drag a, bo a big box around all of these and I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard and delete them off. They're gone. Now I'm going to go file, import, and I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to find that animation one file, which there it is. All right, and I hit open. Uh, it'll pull it in. It might take it a second to conform it. There'll be a little uh, bar in the bottom right. And then I can grab that, uh, throw it on the timeline. Um, it's worth noting that now it's showing video and audio, and there really isn't any audio. Um, we may fix that later. Um, I'll at least show how to do it. All right. Um, so I can click on the time, or I'm, I can click on my video, uh, which you'll notice is no longer broken into sections. Instead of being several still images, it is now an entire video file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this video and I'm going to pick kind of right toward the middle. It says speed duration. I hit speed duration and it says speed and I'm going to speed it up significantly. Um, I'm going to try it at first at 4,000%. Um, which means if you get to look closely, but it's going to take this like almost eight minute video and turn it into a 12 second video. 
Um, again, yours will be about double the length of this, so it'll be a little bit longer, but not like by a ton. And you might end up um, watching it. I'll just hit OK. Uh, so it kind of jumps and gets smaller. Um, I can um, just for ease of use, I might uh, down here, there's this like, here's a mountain, here's a molehill. Um, I might click the mountain a few times. Um, it looks like it's making it bigger, but all that's, it's just zooming me in. So it's a little easier to control when I grab this thing and move it around. Um, and if I hit play, it might lag for just a second. Nope, oh, there it goes. All right, so it looks like it's animating pretty well. I would say 4,000 is reasonable. You want to find a good balance between fluid. Um, you want things to move fluidly, uh, but you also uh, want things to um, not go so fast that you can't see what's going on. All right, um, so I sped up my video, and if, I, if I'm if i finished, if I'm not going to add sound, I would actually repeat the same steps I did before, file, export, media, uh, and then I would call the, I could maybe just call the output name final video, and, um, and then turn that in, and I'd be done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel for now, because I am going to um, at least act like I'm adding some sound. And what I'm going to use for that is this program called Audacity. Um, so uh, if I start Audacity, um, you may have to download or have me download and install the program um, on your computer, uh, depending on which desktop you're on. Um, so I would have to have a microphone hooked in. Um, and uh, basically what I'm going to want to do is maybe just kind of like uh, restore down this program. I want to make it so that I can kind of see both at once. Um, so maybe something like that and something like that. And that way I can kind of see both top bars and quickly click back and forth between them. Um, so, uh, this might be, hopefully it'll be fine, but it might be a little weird considering I'm like running screen capture software at the same time. We'll see if it works. Uh, basically what I would do is in audacity first, I would just run a quick test. I'll hit the record button, blah, 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 blah. And it seems to be working fine. Button. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. It's playing back. Um, so, um, audacity is pretty simple to use. Uh, I record using the record button, and then if I don't like what I recorded, I can hit this little X and get rid of it. Um, so what I would do is this. I would hit record, and then I'm going to go over to my video, and it's going to keep recording. In fact, you can see the little waveform moving uh, while I continue to talk. And I'm going to make sure that my little blue guitar pick is at the beginning of the video, and I might do like a three, two, one click you know uh and i might not say click um because the click is essentially like where the video starts um so i'm watching my monitor i'm gonna go three two one and then i'll start doing some voices like oh hey you want some treats oh here eat this ice cream oh here have this fish now i get to eat you and then you know the mother cries and whatever other sound effects i think i want um you can actually multi-track in audacity um, so I'm going to go back to Audacity. I know I've been talking a lot this whole time. Um, I'm going to scan across it and try to find where I started the actual, you know, it was probably like right around here. And then I'll start doing some voices like, oh no, okay. So, <laughs> so I got to find exactly where that was. And I might do like a three, two, one click, yep. you know, uh, okay, and I might so, not say um, click um, because the click, I'll just go ahead and, you know, I know that none of this is usable. Um, so, um, I'm selecting an audacity just by like clicking and dragging. And then if I hit the del delete key, it'll, uh, bump that stuff off. Let me see. Where um, this is so at. I'm watching my monitor. I'm going to go three, two, one. Okay. So what I'll do is right where I heard myself hit the mouse, I'm going to put the cursor there, drag it this way and then hit delete. Um, and that essentially means when I export this sound file, uh, as soon as the sound file starts playing, that's going to be the beginning. And of then the I'll video. start doing some voices here. These like, you know, dumb oh, hey, you want some treats? Oh, here. Um, if, for instance, the part where uh, he gobbles up the baby, uh, you know, probably around here. Um, you can actually. Oh, nope. Bad at guessing. Whatever other voice. sound effects I think. Nope. <laughs> All right. I'll just play. Treats. Oh, here. Eat this ice cream. Oh, here. Have this fish. Now I get to eat you. Okay. So uh, if I wanted to, I could position the cursor right here. Um, and if I want to just make that gobbling sound more disgusting, I can just get ready, get set. Um, oh, uh, apparently I recorded over myself. So let me undo that. I forgot. Yeah, this is, uh, 
Yeah, this is a little new. Uh, so it doesn't create a new track. I guess you would have to uh, create a new track. Um, I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. Uh, it used to just automatically create tracks. It's probably something in the settings that I haven't checked yet. Um, in fact, it might, yeah, it's probably something in, under here. Uh, at any rate, I could just record multiple things in Audacity and then just match them up uh, in Premiere. Um, so I'm just going to keep it simple here. Uh, file, export, and I'm going to export as a WAV file. And once again, I will just pick the desktop and go to do, 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 do. Yeah, uh, on the desktop, I'm going to go... Uh, I'll just call it sounds nice and generic. Okay. Um, I've got stuff popping up on the other monitor. I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to close out of this. Um, it's going to ask if I want to save the changes, but that's like saving an, an Audacity project. So if I have multiple tracks involved, uh, that might be um, a good thing to do. I'm not worried about it here. Uh, here, I'm just going to go import. And I'm going to scroll around until I find my sounds file. Sounds, 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 sounds. There it is. And then I can drag this onto the timeline, uh, put it wherever I need it to go. Um, in this case, my timeline's, yeah. I'll make that nice and big. All right, and then um, I can open this up just so that I can see at least some of the waveform. Um, I can also, like, move these around a little bit. Um, or if I want to like be able to see more of the waveform, I can go like that. I can control the volume if I need to. Uh, at any rate, here we... Um, so, I'm watching my... Yeah. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much that. Um, and it uh, looks like it's not perfectly matched up, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm getting a little glitchy here. I... I kind of wonder if it's maybe because of the screen capture software running simultaneously. I got kind of a lot going on. Um, so uh, that's how you add your audio. Um, you'll probably have an easier time. Like I said, my Audacity settings are probably a little wonky. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit File, Export, Media. And once again, I would leave all of this stuff as it is. Change output name uh, to Final Animation. Uh, hit save and then hit export and I would expect this to take maybe a little longer but not much um, once it's all finished I can just go to my desktop and find the file that says uh, final um, so I'm watching my monitor there I'm gonna is. go three two one um, so you do want to make sure that when you're creating a video file uh, that you actually export the video. Um, you want to make sure that you are uh, not just hitting save. If I go file save, it's going to save the project. If I hit file export, it's going to save the video. Um, so in other words, if you try to open the um, file and it opens only in Premiere, you don't have a video. Um, you just have like an organization system. Uh, if it opens in a video player, you're good to go. Uh, that's it. Good luck. Like I said, um, unless I say otherwise, this is probably optional stuff, especially like adding sound. Uh, but sometimes people ask about it, um, and that's how you go about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Good luck.